Hello, open-hearted viewers, and welcome to Animal World, our co-inhabitants. On today's program, we present the last part of our interview with well-known vegetarian telepathic horse communicator and founder of Himalayan Herbal, a company offering Ayurvedic herbs for horses, Gaynor Davenport of the UK, who shares more amazing insights she's gained from our equine friends. Often referred to as Britain's horse whisperer, Ms. Davenport has helped hundreds of clients all over the country. Although she has no formal training in veterinary medicine, Ms. Davenport has solved the health issues of many horses. I don't know how I can, how, it's hard to put this into words, but I was working with a horse a couple of weeks ago and he'd had a very nasty experience. And I could say that my eyes became as an x-ray and I could see um, stagnant blood in the front of his chest. Sometimes she uses Ayurvedic medicine, an ancient healing tradition from India, to cure horses. Ayurvedic medicine is one of the oldest forms of, I will call it food supplement because it is a feed supplement, it's not a drug, it hasn't got any drugs in it. Um, it is um, uh, balanced in harmony with the mind, the body and the soul. And if someone has become dis at ease with themselves, they get disease, we can help with harmonizing the body, the mind and the soul with nature because that is what we, we, we all come from, from nature. I knew of Ayurvedic med, uh, medication, herbal plants, many years before I became working as I did. Ms. Davenport continues to astound veterinarians with her amazing intuitive knowledge of equine diseases and the best methods for their cure. She now recalls a conversation with one well-respected animal doctor. I met a lady just by chance. Um, she had got a pony and she asked me to go and see it. And I realized that that the pony had got um, a cancerous growth. When I heard what the horse had to say, she said, oh, I think the vet would be very interested in meeting you. Anyway, I met him. Can you tell me, he said, what do you think a liver would, would be like? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, um, if there was a problem with the liver, and I, I looked up and I was seeing the liver and um, I said, well, if it was a laminetic liver, which is what you're asking me, there would be brown spots on the liver. And he said, how do you know? Is it written on the ceiling? And I said, no, it's written on my heart. I'm listening. And he just, just wrote it down. Now he said, how do you see moon blindness? So I looked again and I saw the eye and I saw little, little strands coming together and then going away. And I saw movement like a pump. And I told him this. He said, I'll have to look that one up. I think you're right. And he went and got a book, which was his major book for his, his work, to show that I'd, it was right. And he said, when can you go to India? And because of my uh, financial situation, that was a totally impossibility at the time. And he said, when you get some money together, I will send you to India. 
that you'll be well taken care of. They will love you. Um, I just looked after one horse uh, for about 12 months and I'd, all I'd taken was the petrol money to get me backwards and forwards because it was down in Guildford and it was such a long way to come. It was the last time I was visiting her and I told her what had happened and how I'd met Dr Graham Wheeler. And she said, well my dear, I was thinking about giving you some money and sending you out to the Brook Hospital in Egypt but I'll give you the money for your ticket to India. And she sent me the ticket to India and I met the Ayurvedic physicians. They didn't leave a stone unturned. They took me to pharmacists, pharmacologists, botanists, heart specialists, pathologists, the professors, and they asked me questions and they really wanted me to know how their plants worked. Ms. Davenport uses a fascinating approach to determining what kinds of medicines and ointments horses need for various conditions. She simply asks the horses. They tell me what their needs are. I will make things up for them um, for, for splints, for um, uh, bruising and that sort of thing for the Ayurvedic medicine. That medicine is actually um, made up for me by their expert people. It's um, put in the right force and the horses will take it if they need it. If they don't need it they will slowly restrict themselves to how much they take. Horses can sense that Ms. Davenport is able to assist them with their health conditions and thus will sometimes seek her out for help. She recalls one such interesting incident that occurred while she was travelling through France. Three horses came out of nowhere on a mountain road in France. The three came up to me, two stayed with me, the mother and her offspring and the other one went down and stood on the bend of the road so that anybody that came up would be aware that there was me and the car on the road. And she told me about her youngster who was wormy and not well. After about 20 minutes, after I'd had the communication, a man came up and he said, a problem, and I said, yes, I said, they followed me. And he said, I know the farmer who they belong to. I said, well, she's ill, she needs to have some worm treatment, you understand? And he said, yes, I understand. He said, I will herd them back down, and then they went off with this man. This fascinating event took place nine years ago, but Ms. Davenport recently had another chance meeting with the same loving mother horse and discovered that equines have long memories. Last week, when I went to, um, to France, and as we were going to this place, which was away from anywhere I was supposed to be, there was a mare and she looked at me. I've got a photograph of her and she was sniffing like this. And I said to my friend, Glenn, I said, Glenn, it's her. That horse recognized me. And I hadn't seen her for all those years. One of Gaynor Davenport's clients, Debbie Moore, was having an issue with her horse companion who began to feel very anxious while travelling in a trailer. After speaking with him, Ms. Davenport discovered that the horse felt unsafe. The client then made some minor adjustments. She was concerned about him um, is, is travelling. Have you altered the petition slightly 
Yes, yes you have. Yes. He's happier with it smaller, definitely. Yes. He was frightened of tipping, actually tipping forward. By adjusting the rear partition, the horse could lean on it and balance himself better while travelling. He thus overcame his fear of being inside the trailer. Ms Davenport has learned that horses also talk with members of other species. A client named Marilyn had sold her house and had asked Gaynor Davenport to inform her horse companions of the news. She asked me to go and see her horses and she got this one particular horse, a pony, that had been her daughter's pony and she was going to move house and they'd been there for quite a long time and um, she asked me if I would let the horses know that they were going to be moved and they would still be her horses and pony but they wouldn't be in the same space. And I went up to see the horses and I told each one of them individually that they were moving, they were okay. But the pony, I left till last because he'd been with them longer. And I hoped that he would be okay. But when Ms Davenport went to see Skippy the pony to tell him about the move, she discovered something very interesting. He told him, the cat had told him, Marilyn had told him her husband, I wonder what it'll be like now we've sold the house and everything's going. And the cat had picked up the sold and gone and told, told, um, Skippy, so they do have language between themselves. Because they are highly sensitive beings, when horses go to a new caregiver, they are deeply affected physically, mentally and emotionally. I work with them when they've moved from one area to another um, and hear what they have to say about the different places that they are because energetically um, th that change has a big um, influence on how they are going to be able to cope with um, the person who's taking them on um, because the change in, in the temperature for a start and the change in the grass um, that has an effect on their minds and um, also the, the body change happens when another person starts to ride that horse. Not all people are considerate with how they keep their horses. Um, yes, we have cobwebs and yes, some places are disgusting and it can be quite, I believe, not only damaging to their health, but damaging to their souls. May heaven bless you, Gaynor Davenport, for your diligent work enabling our noble horse friends to enjoy a better life and helping us better understand their love, sensitivity and intelligence. Through your sincere efforts to assist horses, you are helping to uplift the atmosphere of our planet, thus bringing us ever closer to the day where all beings live in harmony. For more details on Gaynor Davenport, please visit www.himalayanherbal.com. Gentle viewers, thank you for joining us today on Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants. May we all soon have peaceful lives in a vegan world. For more details, please see www.suprememastertv.com forward slash AW.